Hello there, I'm Rhys Brady and welcome to this new series of Top 10 Bikes. Our Men & Motors panel have deliberated long and hard over the best and worst aspects of the bikes available for sale in the UK to bring you the definitive Top 10 list for each of the categories of bikes. This award will be presented to the manufacturer of this week's number one machine. The question is, which bike will it be? Stay tuned to find out. Firstly, I would like to thank you if you've taken the time to vote on the Men & Motors website for your favourite bike. At the end of the series, there'll be a special show where we find out if you agree with the voting of our Men & Motors panel. Now, I'm one of the panellists, and as the show progresses, you'll get to meet the other journalists involved. So, let's get started on the countdown of this week's category, It's Street and Naked Bikes. Let's get down and dirty with the beasts of the streets. Now these bikes are aggressively styled and have powerful engines. Although not hugely good handling bikes, they are quick in a straight line and great for the traffic light Grand Prix. So let's take a look at the bike in 10th position and may the best beast win. Well, the big bad bulldog kicks off our top 10 countdown this week. Well, the Bulldog rumbled onto our streets back in 2001. The looks and the name promise so much, but in reality, it delivers very little. I mean, 1100cc, producing only a measly 64 brake horsepower. 650s or cruisers normally put out that sort of brake horsepower, but if you've recently joined the motorcycling fold, then perhaps a good-looking large-capacity V-twin with not too much grunt is what you're after. You see, you can pose, you can cruise, and know that the Bulldog isn't going to bite you back. The R1 brakes will have no troubles pulling you to a halt, and the Dragstar engine is perfectly reliable, if uninspiring. The Bulldog is a bit of a Heinz 57, if you want to keep it in doggy terms. So, does it float our panels boat? It's aimed at being a first big bike for inexperienced riders, and it's actually very good at that. Whoever came up with the name Bulldog is obviously completely missing the point of, of these attitude-ridden bikes. Calling a bike a Bulldog doesn't give it attitude. It's a chihuahua by nature. It's too big, too soft. Take it to the vet and have it put down. Well, I think the Yamaha Bulldog is a poser's machine and it's all mouth and no trousers. The kind of punter I'd expect to ride that bike would be an accountant who'd buy it and park it outside the local wine bar. So our combined scores for each category of street cred, build quality, performance, comfort and value give the Bulldog a total score of 65%, putting it firmly in 10th place in our chart. And in at number 9 is the fierce looking Kajiva Raptor. Now, Kajiva might not be a mark that you're particularly familiar with, but back in 92 with Eddie Lawson on board, a Kajiva had its first GP win. Shortly after that, the money ran dry and the poor old Castiglione brothers were back to the drawing board quite literally. Now this is a lesson worth learning with Kajiva. You see, they don't have the same backing as a big Japanese company, so getting problems sorted out and spare parts can be a pain. But if you really feel the urge to have an unusual head-turning machine, then the Kajiva is worth taking for a spin. It's a surprisingly comfy bike to ride, especially for someone petite. You see, you tend to sit in the bike rather than on it. The steep rake angle and the wide bars make the Raptor extremely agile. It's great fun to ride and very good for your street cred. It looks like a hooligan and believe me, it can behave like one too. So, what do our panel make of it? I like it, I like it a lot. It handles really nicely, the motor's fantastic. Again, the thing that lets it down and that has let down Kajivas for quite a while now is the finish. It's a bit over the top for me, the style. Having said that, um, it does handle well and the seat is very, very low. It's worth considering if you're shorter and you can't stand cruisers. I couldn't bring myself to recommend it to anyone. Well, I think the Kajiva Raptor is a weird looking machine and it's about as far from gorgeous as I ever imagine a bike could be. And they're not exactly pieced together like a Honda. So our panel's combined scores for each category have given the fierce looking Kajiva Raptor a total score of 69%, putting it firmly in ninth place in our top 10 chart. Muscling its way into our top 10 in 8th position is Buell Sports Fighter. Yes, it's the awesome Lightning XB9S. Now, putting a Holly engine into a sports frame might sound like a wholesale madness to you, but not to Eric Buell. 
the XB9S boasts rim-mounted brakes for good feedback and feel, fuel in the frame to keep the centre of gravity nice and low, and oil in the swing arm, which reduces weight and saves precious packaging space. So what does all this mean when it comes to riding? Well, Harley engines are known for torque. With the Buell, you get a good spread of power right through the rev range. The belt drive makes sure the delivery is smooth and the low centre of gravity with the rigid chassis and steep rake angle means it's as flickable as a loose strand of hair. So what do our panel make of it? The Buell Lightning XB9S is a very different looking bike and, that, and it scores big points because of that, but the engine is just a little bit lacking. Full marks to Buell for striking head and doing something a little bit different. Some people might call it quirky, but it works. Well, I think the Buell is out there on its own. It's rather top heavy and it's mated to that clunky Harley engine and gearbox. It's quite uncomfortable to ride, but hey, it's different and I like it. The combined scores for each category has meant our panel is given the Buell Lightning a total of 71%, putting it firmly in eighth place in our street and naked chart. At number seven is BMW's attempt to be funky, wacky and weird. It's the Rockster. BMW has succeeded in making a bike that looks like C-3PO from Star Wars. They've taken an R1150R, the lights from the GS Adventure, and let a frustrated stylist loose on the rest of it. Now that might sound catastrophic, but in reality, it ain't half bad. For just over seven grand, you get a very different paint job with colour match wheel rims. Even the cylinder heads get a hint of a tint. The BMW's unique telelever suspension system doesn't dive like most bikes do, giving you more encouragement to hoof it through the bends. It can be coaxed into bad behaviour despite its sensible final drive that front wheel will pop up eagerly, which does go against BMW's rather sensible image. It's a hooligan with a posh accent. It's a polite street fighter. A cracking bike if you like that kind of thing. So let's see what our panellists have to think about that. The BMW Rockster is as mad as a fish on a roller skate, but it works. It's a bike I'm not impressed with. It ought to be a lot better than it is. Now, when are BMW going to realise that all the other manufacturers use telescopic forks for a reason? Because they work. Is this BMW's attempt to go against the grain or something? Our combined scores for each category of street cred build quality, performance, comfort and value give the BMW Rockster a total score of 73%, putting it firmly in 7th place in our chart. So in at 6 is the Ducati offering in the form of the Monster 1000. The dual spark engine equates to more power and more torque, just what we need. Chuck in a 30% stiffer frame and the fun really starts. The Catties and Italian bikes in general get the mucky end of the stick when it comes to build quality, but it's a bit of a myth these days. The Italians are hot on the heels of our Japanese friends, and the M1000 is testimony in metal to that fact. The monster still turns heads, even though it's been around since 1993. Its looks have changed very little, so it just goes to show that Miguel Galuzzi got it right first time around. And, of course, it's a Ducati, need I say more? But what will our panellists say? It's a capable bike, looks the part, it goes, does exactly what you want it to. Fantastic bike. The Monster is a fantastic bike, the 1000DS is a great bike, and all for a grand less than the S4R. Well, I think the Monster is a modern classic. Its looks appeal to almost everyone across the board, and the bike is just as happy being ridden down the street as it is around a racetrack. You know, I think that Ducati Monster will go down in history. So our panel's combined scores for each category have given the Italian Stallion, the Ducati Monster 1000, a total score of 76%, putting it firmly in sixth place in our top 10 chart. Right, it's time now for a quick break, but make sure you join us again in part two when we reveal the top beast in our chart of street and naked bikes for 2003. See you in a mo. Hello there and welcome back to Top 10 Bikes with me, Louise Brady. Now in this week's show, we're stalking through the Top 10 Street and Naked Bikes for 2003. But before we continue with the countdown, let's quickly recap from 10 to 6. In at 10, the rather tame Yamaha BT 1100 Bulldog. 
and number nine, the prehistoric predator, Kajiva Raptor. In at eight, the flashy Buell Lightning XB9S. And in at seven, the wacky but harmless BMW Rockstar. Sitting at number six, the Italian fiend, the Ducati Monster 1000. So let's rejoin our countdown of the beasts on the streets. So in at five, it's the big brother to Suzuki's SV650. Yes, it's the SV1000S. Now the SV650 is a hugely popular machine, so on the back of its success, Suzuki decided to go for broke and bring out the 1000cc version. The SV is available fared and unfaired. The unfaired version has a more upright riding position, which is ideal for city riding. The third S version is a touch sportier, with clip-on bars and racier foot peg position. The thumping V-twin is a revamped version of the TL1000S engine. It has the characteristic V-twin lurch, which some find endearing and others find damn right annoying. The fuel injection system helps soothe the delivery of the 125 brake horsepower that this lump is capable of producing. The chassis is based on the 650 version and is a bit of a gem. The price ain't half bad either, it's about six grand. That's what a 600 would cost you and you get 400 cc's more. All that said, the SV1000 hasn't been as popular as one would have expected. It's a case of jack of all trades but master of none. It's a V-twin without being a duke. It's a Tora without being all day comfortable. And it's a sports bike without being a patch on a CBR. So what do our panel make of it all? The Suzuki V-twin is um, it's a good all-round bike and uh, the S version which we're talking about means it's got a fairing and you can you can cruise along at high speed and you can again do a lot of a lot of stuff with that bike um, it's another all-round you know a rival to a VFR Honda and so on really. Suzuki have got a knack of making really fun bikes and the SV1000S is just that fun it's got a, such a great engine it's got a good chassis and with a little half fairing on it, it means you can actually use it. Suzuki's SV1000S is everything that you'd like the 600 version to be. It's got the capability, it's got the power, and it's certainly got the looks. What you get from the SV1000S with the fairing and uh, the comfort that brings at speed, you kind of lose from the riding position. Well, I think the SV650 is a far better bike. The SV1000S doesn't possess much in the way of character in the chassis or the handling or the engine department. It's one of those bikes that it isn't a true sportster, but it's not really a slouch either. So our combined scores for each category of street cred, build quality, performance, comfort and value give the Suzuki SV1000S a total score of 78%, putting it firmly in fifth place in our chart. In at number four is the Japanese favourite, it's the Honda CB900 Hornet. Now Honda's hunky 900cc Hornet is an absolute hoot to ride. Completely unfurred, it's taken the naked look to the extreme. That broad tank narrows seductively into a tiny waistline of a seat and the bike just sizzles with sex appeal, fun and aggression. With a seat height of a reasonable 795mm, it means even us little ladies can take the Hornet out for a damn good thrash. Those wide bars and upright riding position give you full command over the road as it opens up ahead of you. The retuned Fireblade engine is lively and just wants to play. It urges you on and oh boy, it's hard to resist the temptation. It's good around town as it's easy to turn, light on the clutch and the willing fuel injected engine just tugs you along nicely. The Hornet looks big and bad, but in reality it's a bit of a pussycat. So it's over to the panellists to see what they think of the Hornet. It feels as though it's going to handle better than the Phaser, but you know when actually pushed down back roads it, it kind of loses out. The Hornet 900 suffered for not being the naked fire blade that everyone wanted it to be. The Honda 900 is a fairly chunky and well put together bike which oozes smoothness. Now you can feel that D2 motor gently whooshing you across the tarmac. It's a great bike but the problem is it's not that exciting. Now the panel's combined scores for each category give the Honda CB900 Hornet a total score of 80%, putting it firmly in fourth place in our top 10 chart. Striding into the number three spot is the Yamaha Phaser 1000. 
Yamaha's 1000cc phaser is the semi-sensible big brother to the crazy Yamaha R1. Keeping it in the family, Yamaha have given the phaser a retuned version of the R1 lump. Heavier engine internals and a few tuning tweaks give the phaser lots of low down lazy power. But give that big boy a handful and it certainly won't disappoint. It's putting out 143 brake horsepower and there's enough top end to keep you speed junkies more than happy. Power roll on whilst cruising is superb. Just twist and go, go, go. The handling is excellent. Not as taut as the R1, but then it's not a sports bike. The little fairing helps diffuse some of the wind blasts, but taller riders out there will find they're getting it full in the mush if they're not careful. The engine runs hot, so the ride can get a bit sweaty. Long distance comfort isn't as good as you'd expect on such a big tall bike, but the sweet handling and silky engine certainly may cut for it. So let's see what the boys have to say about that. Yamaha's Phaser 1000 is a stunning street bike. It's got an R1 engine, which makes great power. In a, in a really good chassis and it's practical too so you can actually ride it day to day without the, uh, the restraints of riding a, a hardcore sports bike. Insurance isn't going to do you any favours but then with bikes in this category none of them are going to be particularly friendly insurance wise. You could do a lot worse than something like the Phaser Thou. The Phaser, well it's the Hornet's nightmare. An R1 engine street bike mm, and I like it. Our combined scores for each category give the grin-inducing Yamaha Phaser 1000 a total score of 82%, putting it firmly in third place in our chart of street and naked bikes. In the runner-up spot is the bike that's been described not as a mean green monster, but as cheeky and naughty. It's the Kawasaki Z1000. If looks could kill, the Z1000 would not get dead on the spot. You know, it has a look all of its own. It's cheeky, but aggressive at the same time. Kawasaki has managed to pull off retro with an up-to-date edge. The chassis is all new, but the engine and running gear have all been donated by the good old ZX9R. The engines had a retune for far more mid-range and could easily be outdone by the likes of the Phaser. But where this bike comes into its own is on handling. The wide bars and tight chassis mean the twisties won't know what's hit them, and you'll be grinning like a Cheshire cat. So let's see what the boys have to say about that. The Z1000, I think, lives for one thing, really, and that's those exhaust pipes at the back. I mean, they are cool. They're like four rocket launchers, and I think that's great. You lose 10 horsepower just for having those, that, that, that exhaust system, and it's worth it. It looks brilliant. Kind of like the old Z1000 of old, this is just got so much attitude, a really superb four-cylinder bike. Um, looks gorgeous. I mean, I would consider it one of the best looking bikes to have come from Japan, certainly in the last 10, 15 years. Well, I'd say a brave move by Kawasaki. The Z1000 is not for the faint-hearted in the looks or the performance department. I love it. It's light, it's easy to handle, a superb ride, and those retro pipes are gorgeous. Our combined scores for each category of street cred, build quality, performance, comfort and value give the Kawasaki a total of 83%, putting it firmly in the second hot spot in our chart. But before we reveal which bike the Men & Motors panel of experts voted top dog in our street and naked bikes category, let's have a rundown of the chart so far. In at 10, it's the puppy that is the Yamaha BT1100, it's the Bulldog. At number 9, the prehistoric predator Kajiva Raptor. In at 8, the aggressively innovative Buell Lightning XB9S. And in at 7, it's weird but oversensible, the BMW Rockster. Number 6 is the Italian beast Ducati Monster Thou. While at 5, it's the ever popular Suzuki SV1000S. At 4, we voted in the fun loving Honda CB900 Hornet. And in at three, it's last year's winner, the Yamaha Phaser 1000. At number two, it's naughty, but it's nice. It's the Kawasaki Z1000. So have you guessed what's at the top? Well, I won't leave you in suspense any longer. The interesting Italian has stolen first place in our top 10. It's the Aprilia Tuono. Now the Tuono is a bit of an oddball really. Well, think about it. The Phaser has a detuned R1 engine. The Hornet has a detuned blade engine. 
but the Tuono has a full-blown, mad as a bag of cats, milli engine. They even provide nice wide bars to give you a fighting chance to hang on to the beast. The bike feels, sounds and, depending on your taste, looks amazing too. Some think it's the biking equivalent of Kylie in a bikini, others think it's pig ugly. The power is delivered in a smooth and progressive manner and there's lots of torque at your disposal and an exhaust that howls like a banshee. The wide bars make it a doddle to handle. One little nudge and it's on its ear. The chassis is the same as the Millie, so handling is fine. The responsive throttle will help keep the wheelie fiends happy too. So what do our panel make of it all? The Italians really know how to do naked bikes well. I mean, the Tuono is a case in point. I love that bike. It's, it's an RSV Millie, bodywork stripped off, set of high bars, off you go. The Aprilia Tuono is the ultimate urban assault vehicle. It's got, it's got such a great chassis and at the same time it's got a, such a strong engine. Uh, but it's a street fighter and therefore it does what a street fighter does. It does wheelies, it does stoppies. It's an easier bike to ride in some respects because of the big wide bars and it's just a lunatic laugh. Well I think it's just about the silliest sports bike thing money can buy. A full-on racer without the fearing. It can only be described as a hooligan tool and it'll certainly turn heads. So the panel's combined score for each category has given the top Italian Aprilia Tuono a total score of a whopping 86%, making it the number one street and naked bike for 2003. So congratulations to Aprilia. Can I say a big thank you for this to Men and Motors. Um, I know the guys who have voted for it and I very much respect their views. It's even sweeter for me because this happens to be my favourite bike by a long way. Thanks very much indeed. Well, sadly, it's time to go, but don't forget, if you disagree with the panel, you can make your own votes on the Men and Motors website. And the viewers' special will be at the end of the series. That's all for today, but join us next time for the top 10 dual-purpose bikes of 2003. See you then.